just found this video, congratulations, you have been chosen. I have been chosen. Farewell, my friends. I go on to a better place. Gotcha. You are officially on the channel of the goons, the gun runners, and the night nerds. And tonight we dive deep into the three-eyed alien dubbed the Jerry FB. Let's dive three eyes first into this potent monster. Historically, we have been pretty critical of fused or overlaid thermal and night vision hybrid systems. Most of them are virtually unobtainable to normal humans, or they had poor performance thermal monoculars on board. It takes a lot to impress us, and it takes even more to blow our minds. We are not easily swayed from the real world experiences, but we are always open to being proven wrong. The moment we caught wind of the Jerry FB, we were intrigued. We understand that the price range of this unit might make some of you question our sanity. Why would we be sharing a unit that can cost over $15,000? It's because the technology exists and it's getting better year after year. We bit the bullet and got our hands on the JFB and we decided that it was worth running it through its paces. But before we get too deep into the specifications, we wanted to note that there are many different tubes and types of tubes that we offer with this unit. When we are covering specs, I'm mostly going to be covering the housing and the functions of this third eye, the thermal monocular that's on board. One thing we will say, the thermal is so crystal clear and the settings are so dialed in that personally, I don't care what intensifier tube I'm running in this unit. You can care less about the tube and lean more on the thermal to raise the bar. It is a wild sensation truly experiencing a well overlaid system that works seamlessly. Let's discuss these specs. The Jerry FB is a futuristic looking binocular, thermal, and night vision device that reminds us of the three-eyed aliens in Toy Story. It features two independent pods holding the intensifier tube of your choice. Married to the right tube is a thermal monocular that fuses, yes, fuses the night vision and thermal images into one seamless, crystal clear picture for you, the end user. On the housing, users will find two push buttons. One on the left is the function control button, and this is what users are going to use to power on the thermal monocular and switch the thermal overlay templates. The right button is also a function button and it forces the thermal to manually refresh. It also acts as the image intensifier power switch. Further, this button with three quick presses activates the onboard IR illumination. On the front of the housing is a function control knob and this knob can be turned to adjust the gain of your image intensifier tubes. And the gain is the brightness setting of those tubes and it's important to be able to dial that in depending on your lighting conditions. But a short press cycles through even more adjustments on board with this unit. The Jerry FB features onboard compass, time, GPS, location, altitude, navigation, and a host of other important information on board. The thermal monocular can be set to two individual modes thermal and outline, and adjusting the brightness and contrast of the thermal can create a hybrid looking image, or you can set it to appear as if this is a dedicated thermal monocular. Each user can fine tune the image to suit their individual needs. Users should take careful note to fully read their user manual as the Jerry FB is packed with even more features that I simply do not have time to go in depth on in this video. The thermal monocular is a 480 by 512 core resolution thermal manufactured by Infrared USA. Refresh rate is 50 Hertz and the sensor pixel size is 12 microns. The image of the thermal monocular is just like looking through an MH25 V2 or an RH25. It actually is that clear and because of the nature of the bridge assembly, this is truly, and I mean this, truly a bridge seamless functioning fusion device. The housing features a mil-spec dovetail on the top, which will work with any standard helmet mount like the Wilcox G24. IPD stops are included on the housing and are easy to access from both sides and very easy to use and set up. Loops are built into the housing for lanyard use to secure the unit to your helmet in the event of a breakaway. The glass housing and intensifier tubes offer a typical 40 degree field of view, which is 
standard in the world of night vision. Face magnification of the thermal monocular is 1x. The thermal field of view is 25.9 degrees by 20.9 degrees. And the thermal overlay does not fully cover the night vision tube, which allows peripheral vision to see past the thermal overlay. This is important to create awareness and utilize the night vision tubes in times when they might be more advantageous than running the thermal alone. Jerry FB also features auto pod shutdown when the pods are rotated up. While this is a nice feature, we always caution folks not to rely on safety mechanisms over common sense. Be very, very, very certain, no matter what night vision unit you're running, that the power is off before entering high lit areas. One thing the Jerry FB is not is lightweight. The Jerry FB is a very heavy unit with an advertised weight coming in at 20 ounces. To put it into perspective, the PD Pros that are quite frankly my favorite night vision bino on the market weigh in at 12 ounces. Couple the fact that you have to run a battery pack and what you have is a very, very heavy unit. Users will need to decide if the added functions of the Jerry FB make up for the weight that it carries. The unit is so heavy that we have found that the battery pack alone is not enough of a counterweight. So I also have lead counterweights in the back of my helmet. I have to pack even more weight onto the back of my helmet to level it off. And when it comes to neck fatigue, ounces equal pounds. This is not a deal breaker for me personally, but it is something to consider if you are thinking of grabbing this unit. Battery life in night vision mode only is advertised at 80 hours with these dual 18650 batteries. Battery life drops to an advertised eight hours when you're running the thermal with the night vision at the exact same time. Included in the box is a high quality carry case, an instruction manual, a battery pack, battery cable, and the unit itself. A Bluetooth remote is also included and that Bluetooth remote can access many of the functions of this unit remotely. The Jerry FB completely changed my opinion on fused thermal and night vision units and this has become a go-to for all of our night ops. What gets me most excited about the Jerry FB is the fact that I feel like we have actually found somewhat of a unicorn in the world of night vision and thermal. And I know that might sound weird because we've been sort of skeptical about fused night vision and thermal in the past. And you've seen that in a lot of our content. We've kind of talked down on some of the offerings that are on the market because they were a little bit gimmicky or they're just totally out of reach for a normal human being. But I feel like with the Jerry FB, I have a unit that I could actually use in realistic scenarios. So whether I'm driving my vehicle completely blacked out, riding my mountain bike, hiking in the woods, or you wanted to go predator hunting or whatever your uses are, I feel like this unit and the setup that I have right here on my helmet really does check off every single box. And every single time that I touch this unit, and I play with the thermal and I mess around with the settings, I'm just so blown away because what it looks like to me is like I'm looking through an MH25 or an RH25. The clarity is actually that good. And you can dial back the gain on the night vision settings if you'd like, dial in the thermal. It's just a million ways that you can set up this unit. So when I'm looking at it from a realistic standpoint, yes, it's a very, very expensive unit. And I know that, and some of you are already rolling your eyes at me at this point in the video saying, you just said it's kind of a realistic unit, but it costs more than most cars. And I get that. So it's not for everybody, but if this is within your budget and you are on the hunt for a unit that fuses thermal and night vision, this unit absolutely slaps. And so I think the best way to kind of show this to you guys is actually do a little bit of a sort of scavenger hunt with it. And there is one downside to this unit that kind of makes me a little bit sad. And it's that it doesn't have any internal recording. So when we're showing you the next couple clips that Ethan and I are going to be jumping into, just know that we're going to have to record it through a cell phone. So it's not going to be very, I should say it's not going to be very accurate to what you're going to see in your eye. And what I mean by that is, it is a million times better than what you're about to see, but it's gonna look good no matter what. And what we're gonna do is Ethan has a set of Photonis Viper binos 
that have a Jerry CE5 on the front, which is a clip-on thermal device to overlay thermal onto an existing set of binos that you might have. And I think that they're two solid options in the market. I wanna compare them for you in a sense so that you can get a taste for two different options that we feel are a good fit for many different people. So without further ado, let's get into a little bit of a scavenger hunt. As promised, we are on the top of the hill here overlooking a beautiful Pennsylvania field where we are going to be finding Josh, the intern, out here in the darkness. But first, we're gonna be doing it with night vision only. So I have the JFB up on my head. Ethan has a set of Viper binos with the CE5. We're gonna do night vision only to start and we're gonna do this one at the exact same time. So is your unit powered on? Possibly. Possibly. All right, let's flip them down. Just look down at the ground for a second, Ethan. Make sure they're on. So, guys, what we're going to be doing is at the same time, we're going to be scanning the field, trying to find Josh and his dog with night vision only. Josh is not camouflaged. His dog is about as white as you can possibly be. So, I don't know. We'll see if we can find him. Are you ready, Ethan? Let's do it. All right, start scanning. So the one thing I'll say to everybody is we did tell him to crouch with his pup. So I don't, I don't see him. Grass is pretty tall here. Do you see him? Mm. What do you think, Brenton? Should I try to have him wave his hand or should we just go into thermal then? No, I'll wave his hand. Hey Josh, wave your hand a couple times. Well, there he is. <clears throat> I didn't find him yet. Oh my gosh, he's right there. <laughs> he's literally he's, right there. He's laying there. What the heck? Okay, so he's literally like 20 feet in front of us. And that just kind of paints a picture real quick for you guys. With night vision, even without any specialized camo, it is extremely easy. I don't care what type of tube you have in your unit. Very easy to defeat night vision without even using camo, just having the right colors. So we're gonna reset and then we're gonna do the same thing with thermal and show you the difference. Well, I want, I'm curious. I wanna see if we can see him with the thermals. Okay. Now, right where he's laying. Right where he's at. I'm gonna flip I'm on the thermal. I'm flipping it on. I'm gonna see what I can see. Honestly? He, with, did, a, he did a really good job. He did a really I'm not freaking him good job. Either. Joseph. Oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> got him. <he. laughs> okay, we're doing the exact same thing. This time, however, Josh is now somewhere out in the field. We don't know where he's at. We're gonna flip down our units with thermal. Now overlaid with the night vision, we're gonna see if we can pick him up a little bit faster. You ready for it? Should be extremely fast. Should be. So we're gonna look down at the ground first and then on go, we're both gonna look up. You good? Flip her down. Your unit's powered on, Ethan? Yep. Hang ready on a second. Go. I'm gonna dial this in real quick. So I'm just gonna back down gain on that. All right, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, we are going hot. Good? Let's go. I think he's laying down again. He's laying down again. Sleeping on the job. Holy cow, you hire Where these guys. Where do they find these then... guys? All right, look down at the ground. All right, Josh, sit up. Okay, we're gonna do it again. So we're just gonna look up at the same time, Ethan. Try to find him. Ready? Yep. Let's do it. I think I have him. Oh yeah, I got him. Joseph! Oh yeah. Hunter, here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> That's a coyote. That's what so they look like. So that's how much different that is, having the thermal right away. And you know, the funny thing is, thermal is really sort of like having a superpower, but the reality is we've got like three foot tall grass out here. And so we can see heat immediately and we can tell that his dog's running out there, but it's hard to determine exactly what you're looking at. And I think there's a misconception about thermal as well, where people think that you're just, holy cow, his face is freaking creepy poking through the weeds over there. That's so weird. 
but would you agree even like people think, oh, I've got thermal, so I can just go see things. And it is true, but terrain matters as well. And you have to keep that in mind. So you might see glimmers of heat and it doesn't look the same as everything else. You can scan everything sort of different shades, but then all of a sudden there's Josh's face. You can see it clear as day. You don't know what it is necessarily, but there's definitely a heat signature there. So it's an interesting comparison and it's kind of cool that we can showcase this because we have units that are overlaying thermal onto the night vision, so you're getting the best of both worlds. Now, Ethan, if you closed your right eye and hid your thermal, could you pick him out? Uh, no. That's yeah, there's no way. Like, now that I know where he's at, I see a little bit of a black shadow. Yeah, it's very faint. But if it I looks, didn't know what I was looking it, at, yeah. I wouldn't know it's there. So being able to, being able to see that hot spot with the thermal and cross-reference what is there with the night vision is a priceless ability that I, I personally use that all the time while I'm predator hunting. So Josh, go ahead and stand up. So now with him fully standing it's with his jacket, necessary. even in night vision, very, very obvious. If you were scanning, you'd be like, whoa, that's not normal. But the thermal not only tells you that something's there, now that he's standing, I can tell you that is a person. He's looking around left to right. He's got both hands in his jacket pocket. I don't see any weapons or anything on him, but I also see his dog out in the distance. So it allows you to ID things differently when you have both coupled together, whether it's a unit like we're wearing or taking a PVS-14 and something like the MH-25 V2. So that's an interesting comparison. Oh my gosh, it's a coyote. There he is. Anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful. Everybody watching this video is gonna have a slightly different application for the Jerry FB. I'm a predator hunter, so I'm gonna speak to that during this segment and my thoughts surrounding the Jerry FB. With this particular unit, I would definitely use it while predator hunting. The thermal image quality is impressive and rightly so for a unit at this price point, it should be. One thing that would be excellent that you guys didn't get a chance to see is if this was combined with white phosphor image tubes. That is not the case in this particular unit here, but it is possible. And that is something that we are currently actively working on and trying to find a solution on how to do that for you. Personally, while I'm running in the night, hunting predators, I'm running this particular unit here, this setup here with a PVS-14 over my right eye and a thermal over my left eye. The Jerry FB is technically opposite. It has the thermal combined over the right eye. And for some people that could be a positive thing and some people it could be a negative thing. And ultimately that's also gonna depend on exactly how you have the thermal settings configured in the Jerry FB at any given point. See that the Jerry FB is able to be turned into almost a dedicated thermal over your right eye, while in turn, you could back it way down and have the thermal overlay almost completely disappear. And that can be a positive and a negative thing for shooting through a red dot or not if you're right eye dominant. The other option here on the table would be a Viper Bino with the Jerry CE5. I would say the positive of the Jerry FB is out of the box, there's no assembly beyond installing batteries and clipping the power cable to the battery pack, running it through your helmet somehow, and fastening it to the Jerry FB. That would be the maximum amount of assembly required. With the CE5, it takes a little bit more to get the unit clipped on the device that you're looking to use, although it is very minimal. Positive of the CE5 over top of the Jerry FB would be the price point. The price point of the Jerry FB is quite high at around the $15,000 mark. While a set of Viper Binos costs between six to $7,000 and the Jerry CE5 is around $4,000. So you guys can do the math. You're roughly about $5,000 less to build this particular setup over top of the Jerry FB, just to be clear. So let me be clear. And to lay this out very thoroughly, the Jerry FB is a really solid unit, and I would run this unit while I'm predator hunting, mainly because when you have the power turned up on the thermal image that is over your right eye, it is extremely comparable to an RH-25 or an MH-25 or a dedicated thermal, for, for example. It is extremely similar. The clarity is there, the brightness of the image is there, 
and it would allow me to find predators very quickly, just as quickly as when I'm running a dedicated thermal. Part of the reason why I wouldn't use the Jerry CE5 for predator hunting is because the clarity of the image is slightly lacking. I know that this unit has a 640 core thermal in it and the specs look amazing, but I believe that it loses some of the image quality through the projection process into the night vision device. And ultimately, because some of that clarity is lost in that, in what I believe is that process of projection, it is not quite as clear as I would like it to be for predator hunting, for quick detection, extremely quick detection of a moving animal that might only show you a part of its body, not the whole animal. and. The Jerry FB would still show you those things while the CE5 could struggle at times, depending, also depending on the settings that you're running within the CE5. All that to say, because of the price point of the Jerry FB, I'm probably still gonna continue to run this setup on my right while I'm predator hunting, but I definitely would run the Jerry FB if I was keeping this unit long-term on my personal helmet. I could learn to function with it well. We know right away that there are many barriers of entry with this particular unit. We know that most of you probably can't swing this unit and probably can't justify this unit, but I felt like it was still extremely important for us to discuss this particular unit. This is the direction of thermal and night vision hybrid systems, and as they become more and more mainstream, they become more and more obtainable. The largest benefit that I see with the Jerry FB is in the fact that it does essentially what we have come to love in a PVS-14 and a dedicated thermal bridge together. It just does it a little bit more seamlessly and with less mental fatigue. Does this mean that it's better than running a bridge setup? I'd say not. While it might have some benefits over running two separate units, there certainly are some drawbacks with this system. The major drawback that I see with this unit, and honestly, depending on your budget, it might not matter to you, are the cost and the weight. Both of them can be overcome if it's the right unit for you. And the benefits are a more seamless thermal overlay, less to worry about in a single unit, and a more integrated device. Bridged units make you pay attention to more at one time, more buttons, more knobs, more power sources. The Jerry FB combines all of this into one unit with one set of buttons, one power supply, and one manual of arms. So would we typically recommend the Jerry FB or a bridge setup to a customer? For most people, we're still probably going to point them towards a PVS-14 and a bridge thermal. It's simply more obtainable at this time. For folks who have the budget, the Jerry FB does make a ton of sense, and we have zero issues recommending it now after running it personally in the darkness for some time. In fact, I'm so confident in the unit that we have them available on our website, and as you guys all know, I'm extremely particular about what we put on our site. So make sure you check the links in the description for all current options with this particular unit. Also keep in mind that details and offerings do change over time always refer to our website and the included manual that comes with the unit for all of the most up-to-date information. If you are in the market for this unit or any unit that's gonna get you into the darkness, send us an email at cs@arcane.com. We'd love to answer your questions, help you navigate the decisions, and ultimately help assist you into the right unit for your needs. No two people have exactly the same needs, and we're here to help fine tune your options and get you on the path into the darkness. Now get out there, get into the night, become more formidable and become more capable. We'll see you all in the darkness.